Welcome back. This episode from our Gauss Basics series will introduce matrices. We'll show you how to create matrices, find their size, extract and modify specific elements with indexing, and grow them with concatenation. Along the way, we'll also show you how to open data in floating data windows with a Control-E hotkey. Continuing with our driving cost theme, we'll create a matrix with some AAA driving cost statistics. Matrices are declared inside of curly braces and commas are used to separate the rows. New lines aren't significant, so both of these will create a 2 by 3 matrix. Matrix declarations like this only allow literal numbers. Variables cannot be placed in a matrix declaration. For historical reasons, Gauss will place the text variable name in the matrix rather than the number that it represents. So this statement will place the character x in the first element of the matrix rather than the value that the x variable represents. We can find the size of a matrix with these commands. The first two commands simply return the number of rows and the number of columns as you probably expect. Get orders returns a 2 by 1 matrix where the first element is the number of rows and the second element is the number of columns of the matrix. It can also be used to return all the dimensions of arrays with more than two dimensions, which we will discuss in a future video. Gauss uses square brackets for indexing. The row indexes first, and a comma separates it from the column index. Ranges can be specified by using the colon operator. We can use the colon operator to specify a row range, a column range, or a range for both. If we want to select an entire row or column, we can use the dot operator to specify all elements in the row or column rather than inputting the actual range with the colon operator. To assign to a variable by index, place the index expression on the left of the equal sign. Before we do that, let's open up our autocost variable in a floating data window with the Control e hotkey. Now you'll be able to see the change when we enter our assignment commands. Let's perform a couple more assignments to our autocost matrix for demonstration purposes. Index assignments cannot add rows or columns to a matrix. They can only change the values of a matrix's current values. To grow a matrix, we use the concatenation operators. The tilde operator adds columns to an existing matrix, performing horizontal concatenation, while the pipe operator performs vertical concatenation by adding rows. Before we work with the concatenation operators, let's reset the autocost matrix to its original values. We'll do that by running the line with the original matrix assignment. In Gauss, you can run a single line of code by clicking anywhere in the line before the semicolon, which ends the statement, and either right-click and select Run Current Line, or press the F4 hotkey. Notice that the cursor is automatically moved forward to the next line to make it easy to run sections of code one line at a time. Though, if you do want to run a few lines at once, you can highlight an entire block of code and run it in the same way that you would run a single command. Back to concatenation. Let's create two row vectors, one with the costs for an electric vehicle and the other with the costs for a hybrid. We'll add one of them to the top and one to the bottom of our auto costs matrix. To illustrate horizontal concatenation, we'll add a column with the estimated annual insurance costs for each of these vehicles. This will be a good time to show you a couple more indexing tricks before you go. It's really helpful to know that you can specify more than one index at a time and even combine that with the colon operator. Feel free to pause or slow the video if needed. Now that you've been introduced to matrix declarations, indexing, and concatenation, our next lesson will look at matrix operators. See you then.